is string theory really the answer? Where do you fall on this? Like, how do you make sense of this puzzle? Why do you think it has fallen out of favor? Yeah, so I, don't, I would actually challenge the statement that's fallen out of favor. I would say that any field of research, when it's new and it's the, the mm -hmm. bright, shiny bicycle that no one has yet seen on that block, yeah, it's going to attract attention. And uh, the news outlets are going to cover it and students are going to flock to it, sure. But as a, as a field matures, it does shed those qualities because it's no longer as novel as it was when it was first introduced 30, 40 years ago. But you need to judge it by a different standard. You need to judge it by, is it making progress on foundational issues, deepening our understanding of the subject? And by that measure, string theory is, is, is scoring very high. Now, at the same time, you also need to judge whether it makes contact with experiment, as we discussed before, too. And in that measure, we're still challenged. So I would say that many string theorists, myself included, are, are very sober about the theory. It, it has the tremendous progress that it had 30, 40 years ago. That hasn't gone away. But we've become better equipped at assessing the long journey ahead. And that was something that we weren't particularly good at back, say, in the 80s. Look, when I was just starting out in the field, there was a sense of physics is about to end. String theory is about to be the be all and end all final unified theory, and that will bring this chapter to a close. Now, I have to say, I think it was more the younger physicists who were saying that. Some of them were seasoned, even if they were pro-string theory at the time. I don't know if they were rolling their eyes, but they knew yeah. that it was going to be a long, long journey. I think people like you know John Schwartz, one of the founders of string theory, Michael Green, no relation to me, founders of the theory, uh, Edward Witten, you know, one of the main people driving the theory back then and today. I think they knew that we were in for a long haul, and and that's the nature of science, quick hits that resolve everything, few and far between. And so if you were in for the quick solution to the big questions of the world, then you would have been disappointed. And I think there were people who were disappointed and moved on and work on other subjects. If you were in, in the way that Einstein was in, for a lifetime of investigation to try to see where, what the answers to the deep questions would be, then I think string theory has been a rich source of, of material that has kept so many people deeply engaged in moving the frontier forward. There's a few qualities about string theory which are weird. I mean, a lot of physics is just weird and beautiful. So let me ask the question, what do you as most beautiful about string theory? Well, but uh, what attracted me to the theory at the outset, beyond it's putting gravity and quantum mechanics together, which I think is um, its true claim to fame, at least on paper, it's able to do that. What attracted me to the theory was the fact that it requires extra dimensions of space. Mm -hmm. And this was an idea that intrigued me in a, in a very deep way, even before I really understood what it meant. I somehow had, I mean, talk about sort of the emotional part of consciousness and the cognitive part in some, perhaps you'd call it strange, in some strange emotional way, I was enamored with Einstein's general relativity, the idea of curve, space, and time. Before I really knew what it meant, it just spoke to me. I don't know mm -hmm. how else to say it. Mm -hmm. And then when I subsequently learned that people had thought about more dimensions of space than we can see and how those extra dimensions would be vital to a deep understanding of the things that we do see in this world. Four, five, six dimensions might explain why there are certain forces and particles and how they behave. To me, this was like amazing, utterly amazing. And then when I learned that string theory embraced all these ideas, embraced the general theory of relativity, embraced quantum mechanics, embraced the possibility of extra dimensions, then I was then I was hooked. Mm -hmm. And so when I was a graduate student, we would just spend hours, uh, we, I mean, a couple of other graduate students and myself who had a, have sort of worked really well together, it was at Oxford in England, 
we would we would work these enormous numbers of hours a day trying to understand the shapes of these extra dimensions, the geometry of them, what those geometrical shapes for the extra dimensions would imply for things that we see in the world around us. And it was a it was a heady, heady time. And and that kind of excitement has sort of filtered through over the decades. But I'd say that's really the the part of the theory that I think really hooked me most strongly. 